injuries, an unfortunate but inevitable occurrence in sports. It's never a good injury because it causes real people a lot of pain and prevents them from doing the things they enjoy doing. But some of these injuries are just easier to recover from. And some of these players are just better at recovering and being persistent through these injuries. And they're just bad injuries. These are ugly, have long-lasting effects, and take a long time to recover from. And several teams have players that are integral to the team's chemistry, flow, and success that are suffering from such injuries. E.g. ACL tears, muscle tears, hip injuries, broken bones, etc, etc. Anyway, hello my gamers, this is Alex the Guy Gamer, and here are 5 NBA teams that will suffer, or are suffering, as a whole, from a single player's injury. Step in the right direction. And there were a lot of nice big games, all of a sudden 3 or 4 guys are sitting. Kevin Love! First up on our list is Kevin Love of the Cleveland Cavaliers. After losing LeBron James, the Cavs were never expected to be good, especially not after the departure of, well, the best player currently in the NBA. But with a team with an all-star in Kevin Love, a championship coach in Tyron Lue, and, all, and other solid pieces like J.R. Smith and Tristan Thompson, no one expected them to start the season 2-13. That's really bad. I'm gonna be straight with you, this team is looking terrible. It doesn't help that Kevin Love is out with an injury that will put him out of commission until early December. This is an injury that was bothering Love since the preseason. It may explain the subpar play he demonstrated in the first four games of the regular season. With the trading of Kyrie Irving and the aforementioned departure of LeBron James, Kevin Love was supposed to be the team's sole all-star caliber player. So his injury, as well as the recent firing of Tyron Lue, will definitely hurt the Cavs in the win call. And not that I'm glad that he's injured, as no one should be. This may, however, in fact, be a blessing in disguise, as they will probably end up with a top 5 pick in the upcoming NBA draft. And in that way, they could build themselves back up to success in the NBA. No. See if the Wolves can get the final bucket. Okogi coast to coast, and a whistle comes in. Number 4, the Brooklyn Nets and Karis LeVert. The Brooklyn Nets organization is one that has historically struggled to stabilize their franchise, identity, and roster, known to have occasional blips of success, but then dip into the mires of mediocrity and worse. But now, in 2018, the Nets finally seem to have some sort of a future that can somewhat offset the massive string of blunders that is their recent past, aka the Billy King era. This is one of the worst stretches of managing in the history of sports, as they traded away a grand total of one defensive stopper, two all-stars, and two of the best young players in the league in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, as well as another promising young star, Colin Sexton. Think of what they could have done with those players on that roster. That's for another video. But to the main point, things were starting to look up for this downtrodden franchise. Winning games against teams like the 76ers, which was a blowout, the Nuggets, which came from a game winner from the man himself, Splitting games with the Pistons with score differentials of 3 or less, both times, and dropping close games to teams like the Pelicans, 117 to 115, the Timberwolves, 120 to 113, and even the Warriors, 120 to 114. Overall, they've just been keeping them honest, never letting the opposition blow them out by too many points, and showing their great player development with D'Angelo Russell, Spencer Didwini, Jared Allen, and Rondé Hollis Jefferson, as well developed rising stars. So it was a devastating blow to the team when the heart and soul of their young up and coming roster, Karis LeVert, went down on a block attempt on Josh Okoge, snapping his ankle. Now fortunately, he will not need ligament surgery, so at least he'll have the advantage of not having like torn ligaments in his feet. But since his foot was dislocated, he will need to sit out until at least February. He was one of the Nets' seemingly infinite number of breakout players, and is currently averaging career highs in points, minutes, rebounds, field goal percentage, and box plus minus, and seemed on pace to making his first All-Star game, as well as winning the Most Improved Player Award. This injury is devastating to the team, the future of the franchise, and most of all, for Karis himself. However, there are some players on this Nets team that play his position that could at least somewhat make up for what they lose through this injury. But seeing as the current record is 12-8 and 8 through 20 games, it's not looking up very much for the Nets, so we'll have to see. Five shots, credit the Milwaukee defense. Inside for Zingas! But he goes down hard, and he's hurt. 
For number 3, we have Christoph Przingis of the New York Knicks. The Knicks are a very storied organization, especially since they are, of course, New York City's hometown team, but they are a team that has gone through countless years, tears, star players, management systems, contracts, and rebuilding period. Now after nearly two decades of James Dolan's incompetence, the Knicks finally seem to have a stable future. Drafting Christoph Przingis at number 4 in 2015, he was booed in that draft by the way. Reacquiring draft picks, trading away Carmelo Anthony's massive contract, you get the idea. Anyway, in the 2017-18 through 18 season, Christos Porzingis was a bright spot in an otherwise dismal first 5 months of the season, averaging career highs of 22 points, 2.4 blocks, 39.5 3 point percentage, 18.5 shots, and 31% usage rate. However, on February 6, 2018, KP went down after throwing down a monster slam on Giannis Antetokounmpo with what was later diagnosed as a torn ACL. Needless to say, this injury forced him to sit out the rest of the year, and the Knicks finished with a record of 29 and 53. They've now started off 5 and 15, as opposed to their previous record of 10 and 10 with Porzingis last season. And this will mean many more losses without their star, as the Porzingod will be out until at least Christmas. For number two on this list, we have DeJounte Murray of the San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs are noted as being one of the most successful franchises in NBA history. They have been historically well run, have had a large number of draft steals and successful players, and to boot, have one of the winningest histories of any NBA team. They have had a winning record 36 times, made the playoffs 38 times, have an all-time franchise record of 2,495 and 1,650, have won at least 50 games 29 times, have won at least 60 games 7 times, went to the NBA Finals 6 times and only lost once, and had an 18 year streak of winning 50 games in a single year until last year, where they only won 47. That last 2017 through 18 season marked the end of the Spurs dynasty, as their best player, Kawhi Leonard, was recovering from a very bad injury for most of the year. But that's for a different injury video. And that wasn't even the end of their losses, as they were forced to trade away that injured star player for DeMar DeRozan, who is currently doing the best he can to fill Kawhi's massive shoes. And now the team is without that very same defensive-minded two-way star, and would look like they'd have some spacing issues on paper, but so far Greg Popovich has been able to make it work, as they've gone 8-7 and seven in their first 15 games. However, many of those 8 wins have been closed games, and now they're without their other defensive stopper and main young prospect, DeJounte Murray, who went down in the preseason on a layup attempt against James Harden with what was later diagnosed as a season-ending torn ACL. This has absolutely destroyed their defense, as a historically good defensive team is now 20th in the, in the league in defensive rating, and at points was even dead last in that category. It seems as though not even Pop can overcome the team's defensive woes without Kawhi or Murray. This injury also sets back DeJounte's development as a player for a year, slowing down the Spurs' progression in youth development. In addition, guards Lonnie Walker and Derek White are, were also out with injuries for a short period of time. In DeJounte's absence, the Spurs have started off-guard Burn Forbes to allow DeRozan to take over the ball. Obviously, DeJounte's injury is a big blow to the team's defense and the team in general, but if I know the Spurs, they'll pull through this and even throw in a playoff appearance for the 29th straight time. 66, Oklahoma City. Robertson crashes to the floor. Did he, hit a, uh, did he hit a wet spot or did he step on someone's foot or something? That... Rounding off this list for number one is Andre Roberson of the Oklahoma City Thunder. When the Thunder traded for Paul George and Carmelo Anthony in the offseason of 2017, most people who followed the NBA assumed that the Thunder would be one of the few teams to challenge the Warriors juggernaut. That didn't turn out as anyone expected. Melo didn't mesh well with the stars. Westbrook was still in revenge tour mode from last season. Paul George was inconsistent, and the team as a whole was very streaky, and only finished fifth in the Western Conference. They were a bad defensive team at their worst, and an amazing one at their best, and actually finished ninth in defensive rating, which is somewhere in the middle. But most of that was because of one player who may be one of the best defenders of the NBA. But not even just one of, it's given that he is definitely one of the best defenders in the NBA. No, he may have been the best perimeter defender in the entire NBA that year. Just to show you how much of an impact he made defensively, here are a few stats. 1.2 steals, 0.9 blocks, 2.8 defensive box plus minus, 
12.5 points per 100 possessions, worse when off the court. These all go to show how valuable Roberson was to a team full of bad defenders, and inefficient, ball-dominant offensive players. However, his season was cut short when he went down against the Pistons on a bad step, rupturing his left patellar tendon, which is located on the kneecap. The Thunder instantly dropped in defensive rating. Despite signing Corey Brewer, known as a defense specialist, they just weren't able to make up for the absence of Roberson. Roberson was also a large factor in their offensive flow, as despite shooting just 26% for 3 over his career and averaging just 6 points per game, he made the offense smooth with his cuts to the basket, screens, and off-ball movement. When he underwent surgery, most people expected him to be back in shape by the beginning of the 2018-19 season. However, due to a setback, we won't be seeing Roberson until December. As Billy Donovan said per NBA.com, it's no different than having a, a guy that gets 25 points per game and goes out. You're not gonna have one person go out and replace 25 points. You can, just can't replace the defense and offensive flow that Roberson provides. However, the Thunder have been somewhat able to get it together, as the current record stands at 11-6. and six. As the Thunder started the season just 1-4 and four in their first five games. They did, however, take some losses to teams like the Kings and the Suns, which are both teams that are expected to be in the lottery. Now, granted, the Kings have started off, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see until December. Well, that concludes the list. I never really realized how much sports injuries affect the players in their daily lives until I hurt my knee a few weeks ago. I think it was some sort of mild ligament sprain, but it goes to show how much even the minor injuries can get in the way of your daily life. And it's not just that you can get injuries in sports and that affect your life, you can get injuries just walking down the street and they'll affect you in sports. And those injuries are annoying, and sometimes they're really serious, and they're so much more than an inconvenience to the teams. In the comment section below, you can tell me about some injuries that you've had like in sports and with that being said i hope the best for these players and teams as anyone should but it'll still be interesting for all these teams to see how they progress remember to like subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comments as all for now goodbye my gamers and have a great thanksgiving I'd like to give a quick thank you to Asthenic, the creator of this beat mix. As always, the link to, the, to his channel and the song will be in the description. I really recommend his channel if you want some relaxing vibes in your music, and I enjoy listening to his mixes while I'm working at school or on a project and just chilling and relaxing in general. So yeah, one of the best channels to find is a good, simple beat mix, and that's great. That's the end. Goodbye, my gamers.